What we're doing today, what we're looking at in this video, are the female, female cards. In a sense, the feminine characters who are likely to appear in experience reading. I promised um, Witchcraft magazine that I will write a piece for them about the Emperor. So what I'm actually going to do is look at the Empress, the High Priestess, Card of Strength, and some of the minor cards, and sort of compare and contrast those. So what that this card's turn up in your reading. What is your reading trying to tell you? Um, the Empress in the Rider Waite deck. There she is. She's the third character that the Thor meets on his journey. It's not hugely apparent in this one, but in some other decks, the Empress is very definitely pregnant. So you, you can take that at its base meaning, because of course, if you're, if, if you're reading professionally, or even if you're just reading for friends, it's a very commonly asked question. Tarot, and I can't emphasise this enough, this is not end of the pier fortune telling. This isn't, you're going to have three children and you're going to live in a house with a blue front door. But, you know, if, if you're someone who, who is... Um, who, who is hoping to have a family um, am I going to get pregnant is is a, a question that's foremost in their mind and do bear in mind if you are a professional reader you, you, people are going to come to you or they're going to phone you with very real problems um, you know you might find yourself talking to somebody who's perhaps halfway through their second IVF cycle. If if you are thinking about reading professionally, um, don't take it lightly because you'll be working with people with real problems, real issues. Um, you know, it's tarot. This this. This isn't something you do for fun, it's something that you do with respect and it's re respect for um, respect for tarot itself, but also re respect for the people who are, who are coming coming to you. So if you do have the card of the Emperor in somebody's um, perhaps longer term future, um, and of course, it is the future that people will be asking you about. You know, if 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 you have this and you have perhaps the lovers, this person is in a stable relationship. Perhaps um, ten, ten of cups, happy home, happy family. You know, do think about it. Is this? Are we taking this simply at its? Um, at its base meaning, but also the Empress, you know, it's fertility and abundance in lots of forms. She's sitting there in a wheat field. Uh, she has the mirror of Venus, um, it's very much about love, not just love to your partner, but love to an awful lot of people, and nice cheery yellow sky. This is the Rider Waite deck, more accurately, of course, the Waite Smith deck. The artwork on this done by Pamela Coleman Smith. Um, which, of course, was um, a huge step, made, made a huge change in, in the wonderful world of tarot, early part of the 20th century. Um, always have a look at the sky. Nice, happy, yellow, sunny sky. You know, a lot of positive energy um, coming from this card. In some decks, she is actually holding the cornucopia, the the horn of plenty. Um, if I was going to name one woman that I would think of as the empress, I would go with Anita Roddick. 
the um, Dame Anita Roddick, the um, amazing lady who, who set up the body shop and built, literally built an empire. Um, and used that power, and I think power is the right word, to empower other women. And there's a lot of um, fair trade stuff there against animal testing. A very, very different perspective from the emperor, her male equivalent, card number four, the next person that the fool meets on his journey. A, a male emperor person would be may, maybe Richard Branson, maybe Bill Gates, the kind of men who are very competitive and their aim in life is, is often to put a competitor out of business rather than actually to um, share power around so that everybody gets um, everybody gets a little bit of this and everybody everyone benefits from from their kind of wealth and abundance in um, the good tarot deck just Jay this the good tarot I wrote a review about this for um, Pagan Dawn magazine because it is quite a fun deck to work with beautifully illustrated Colette Baron Reed the Empress here, again, she's she's holding she's holding the the, the wheat. Um, that's very much about fertility and abundance, very much about feeding other people. She's very much a, a mother figure. She is very much, you know, I will feed you. The High Priestess, the card that comes before her, the card that the second person the fool meets on, on his journey. Whereas the Empress is very definitely an Earth character. Come back to that in a moment when we talk about the Queen of Coins. The, the Empress, there she is, she's sitting in a wheat field. This is very much about Earth in a sense that it's very much about meeting your base needs. Um, you know, keep keeping a roof over your head, if you like. The the high priestess. Um, look at the card. She has three moon phases there. Very much linked to goddesses like Isis, the moon. The thing about the moon is there's always a, a sort of otherworldly aspect to that. She's very much a water based character. Very much not of this world very caring, very spiritual, but um, we need both aspects, don't we? we? We need earth and and we need water. The High Priestess appears in a reading. Maybe sometimes she can say, are you spending too much time in the other world? Do you need to come down to earth a bit more? Do you need to resonate with a bit more Queen of Coins, a bit more Empress? earth energy um in the good tarot she, she's simply there um just her face almost a, a disembodied face um what might we do the other female card in your in your major series is that of strength Feminine strength. Sometimes it's the strength to get through something. Here, um, again, it's a happy card. The yellow sky. She's tamed a lion. Um, but she doesn't carry a sword or a whip. She doesn't assert control over a lion. She sort of negotiates and cajoles with a lion and thereby um, tames something. Perhaps this could possibly relate to some sort of addictive behaviour. What is the lion in your life? What is it that you need to tame? What is it that you need to negotiate with? What is it you need to deal with? Um, maybe quite simply you're drinking too much. 
maybe the addiction in your life is a relationship. Maybe the addiction in your life, the challenge in your life is perhaps it's the 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 job that you're hanging on to even though you've outgrown um even though your job is kind of squashing you in some respect and this is time to actually not so much stand up for yourself but kind of to start perhaps negotiating with that difficult challenging boss the lion in your life this does of course um, also if you want if, if, if you want to add an ast astrological element to this does of course re re relate to leo um strength strength and good tarot slightly different it's about inner strength rather than overcoming rather than taming someone else Perhaps strength is running a marathon, running <coughs> past the um, past the finishing line. If strength turns up in a reading, if it turns up in in a future, it can mean perhaps a strong woman coming into your life. But if it relates to the Quirin, if you're reading for a lady and um, relates to her, it it can often say, particularly if there are swords cards in a reading, yes, there are challenges ahead, but you have the strength to get through a challenging time. You will learn from this, you will grow from it, you will find an inner strength that you didn't know you had. Queen of Coins, very much an Earth character. Um, roses there, very much, uh, you know, a very joyful card. Very much about literally being in control of money. Um, hard work rewarded, if you like. Uh, probably the nearest minor card to to the Emperor. In in the good tarot, there she is. You know, she she's very much a woman alone. So do look for signs of of other people around her. People, perhaps page cards, which often often indicate children in your life. The Queen of Fire. Fire is, of course, energy, it's um, dynamic, it's very much about work, it's very much about achieving through work. So, Queen of Wands in a, in, in a reading, again, very much an impressed character, but with that sort of fiery kind of um, sun sort of energy there, um rewards are there but you need to work for them i think that's one meaning of that if if the queen of wands appears as someone in a reading who's a character in your queer and smart life can represent um perhaps your boss at work can represent work itself if you work in a sort of fairly female orientated environment um try to think of a way of phrasing this tactfully. A feminine man can appear as a queen. Um the you know, male and female. I think we're more aware of this nowadays because there's there's um we're we're talking a lot more about transgender people, but not everyone you know There are feminine men. There are also quite, um, there are also quite masculine women. So, male cards like the ki king, perhaps the king of wands. If you have a, a a female boss who's taken on that very male, um, I'm in charge and you will do what I tell you to do, 
type approach to management, um, they, they'll often they'll often appear as as a male character. Queen of Wands is very definitely female, very definitely like the Empress. I steer rather than leading from the front. Very quickly, Queen of Queen of Cups, Queen of Hearts. Um, Queen of Water. I always think of Princess Diana, who was of course born under under the sign of Cancer. A, you know, very much the mother character, very much endlessly giving. Um, very much endlessly giving love. This is a wonderful thing. Love sometimes, and if if you have the Ace of Cups, this limitless amount of overflowing love in a reading. You know, water is of course beautiful, but we can drown in it. Love can sometimes limit us. Uh, we come back to the Empress here. She often appears in a Celtic cross spread as your second card, what crosses you. Sometimes that can be literally your own mother if you're finding it difficult to cut those apron strings and move on. Sometimes a querent's role as a mother if she's trying to be this absolutely super mum. Oh, I can't possibly leave my children with anyone else because nobody can look after them in quite the way that I do. I have to be there for them 24-7. That, yeah, L love, can, love can limit us as much as it can enable us to grow. Finally, we get to Queen of Air, Queen of Swords. Maybe she's the woman we don't feel quite so comfortable with. Maybe she's the lady that we're not quite so sure about. The Amazon warrior woman. The woman who, woman who fights back. Put her together with the Queen of Wands. It can often mean, yes, challenging times at work. Yes, you need to stand up for yourself more at work. Um, to stand up and be counted, to battle your way through as um, a, as a woman, it, it's more challenging. It's somehow not what we're supposed to do. But isn't there a point where we all need to stand up sometimes? The other meaning of the element of air, of course, is action. Think of a windmill. Think of air powering a windmill. Here she has an owl on her shoulder, very much like Athena. Also mean uh, messages, news coming in. But, you know, maybe we all need to do this. Maybe we all need a little aspect of the Empress, the caring, nurturing woman. But maybe we also all need a little bit of strength. Maybe we all need a little bit of that Amazon warrior approach to life. Planning next to make a video about some of the darker cards. But, um, they are going to turn up, you know. You're going to be there, you're going to be reading for someone. And card 13, death. The tower, the devil, they are going to turn up. You know, maybe you'll be working at a fair, maybe reading for, for friends, um, and you will get these cards. They all have something to tell us. Do subscribe. Um, lots of videos on my channel, some about crafting, some about storytelling. And hope to see you again soon.